This call may be recorded or...
Good morning, everyone. Happy Thursday. This is Rochelle, who joined the call. This is Declare Victory. Good morning. It's Susie. Good morning, Susie. Good Happy morning. Thursday. Can I thank you? I'm going to the doctor this morning. Um, if you can please keep me in your prayer. And also, I'm having that bad pain again in my left leg. So if you can please. Keep me in your prayers. We will keep you in your prayers. Be encouraged. You stepped out there yesterday on faith. Stand. And when all you can do, stand. Continue believing in the Lord. Continue kicking that enemy in the head. Let him know that you are healed. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. We're going to continue to lift you up, Susie. Be encouraged. Yeah, my appointment is uh, this morning at 850 Okay, we'll definitely be lifting you up. Thank to you God so be the glory. Much. You are healed. Thank you. To God be the glory. Thank you so much. Yes. Yes. Okay. You're welcome. Oops. Have a birthday. Good morning, it's Diane. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Good Diane. morning, Rochelle. Happy <laughs> Thursday. Happy Thursday. You. Good morning, this is Mary. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Good morning, Michelle. It's Miss B. Happy Thankful Thursday. Yes, indeedy. High five. It is a thankful Thursday. Happy Thursday. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Declare Victory. Has anyone else joined the call and would like to say good morning? Good morning, Rochelle. Happy Thursday. Good morning, everybody. God bless. It's persistent. Good morning, persistent. Happy Thursday. Amen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Have a blessed day. You too. Good morning, Mom. Happy Thursday. Good morning, daughter. Happy thankful Thursday. I love you. Have a super dope blessed day. Love you too. Good morning. Welcome to the Clear Victory. Who else has joined the call? Welcome to Declare Victory. This is Rochelle, your greeter. Who's joined the call and would like to say hallelujah is the highest praise to God. We give all the glory. Who's joined the call? Hallelujah to God be the praise. We give God all the glory this morning. This is Juanita. Good morning, Rochelle, and good morning, everyone on the prayer call. Good morning, Juanita. Yes, to God be the glory. Hallelujah. I guarantee you, if you just take a deep breath in and say, Jesus, real loud, you'll feel a release. You'll feel freedom. You'll feel his heart and his compassion. Just give him a shout out. Who's joined the call this morning on this thankful Thursday? Good morning, Juanita. This is Jr. Good morning, Jr. This is Rochelle. How are you? Happy Thankful Thursday. Happy Thursday. I apologize. Good morning, Rochelle. No worries. It's all good. You have a blessed day. You as well. Good morning. Good morning. Happy morning. holidays. It's beloved Barb. God bless everyone this morning. Good morning, beloved Barb. Treats and all. Happy Thursday. Good morning, Sister Lisa. Happy Thursday. God bless everyone on the call. Hey, hey, have a great day. You too. Have a great day.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Declare Victory. This is Rochelle. Who's joining the call? Has anyone else joined the call before we get started and wants to say good morning? Morning, Cheryl. Morning, Deepy Santa. Christina. Good morning, Christina Joy Joy. Has anyone else joined the call and would like to say good morning before we get started? Of course, y'all know I'm multitasking as usual. Lord, I thank you for you are the multi that allow me to pass. Because it's not me, it is you. To God be the glory. If there's no one else, I'll go ahead and get started. If I can ask you all to please place your phones on mute as we go ahead and proceed with the call. Good morning. Welcome to the Clear Victory. I am Rochelle, your hostess. Thank you for joining us here on the Clear Victory. We are a prayer call that meets Monday through Friday, starting at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard, 8 a.m. Central Standard, and 9 a.m. Eastern Standard to edify, empower, encourage, and equip you in your walk with Christ. Be sure to call in and join us throughout the month of December. Our monthly theme is the same. The declares will focus on God's grace that sustains every part of our lives. Make sure you call in so you can receive your blessing. There is one announcement today. Ladies, please join us tonight and every Thursday night for Walk It Out, Women's Call hosted by Ms. Lisa Porter. They will be going through the book entitled Emotionally Healthy Spirituality. It's Impossible to be Spiritually Mature While Remaining Emotionally Immature by Peter Scazzaro. The call takes place from 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard, 8 to 9 Central Standard, and 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard right here by calling the same number tonight. There were no prayer requests submitted by the app, but we have uh, one spoken request by Susie. We're going to continue to lift her up and come in agreement that she is healed. We're praying for her appointment today that all will be well. She'll get answers and that she can walk in her healing. I'm requesting that we just keep all the families that are grieving during this holiday season um, that are feeling the pressure of people not being here, of loss, of lack of finances and everything, and also hold up Stephen, um, DJ Twitch, boss. Hold his family up um, as he has passed away on yesterday, taking his own life. It is so important that we support one another and that we look out for one another. Hmm. The order of the call, prayer and corporate praise, will be brought to you by Miss Diane. The declaration will be done by Dion. I'll repeat the order of the call. Prayer and corporate praise will be brought to you by Miss Diane, and declaration will be brought to you by Dion. The scripture today, Psalms 84, verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withheld from those who walk in blameless. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, doing of his holy word. Be encouraged on today. Set yourself aside as we go to the throne of grace. Please check your phones. Place them on mute as the prayer warrior comes forth. Have a blessed day, everyone. Be encouraged. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you for a brand new day of your brand new mercy. God, we thank you that you have established for ever and ever sustaining and enacting faithfulness and uprightness, oh God. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord God, that 
you open our eyes this morning that we may see, our ears that we may hear what thus says the Lord regarding his word, that we may have it on the inside, Lord God, that we may grow our inner man and that our faith may grow strong in you. Father, we thank you that you are the sovereign, Lord. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. God, you are the great I am. There is none like you. Father, we thank you for all that you do. We thank you for each day that we open our eyes, O oh God. We thank you for each day as we wake up, Lord God, and able to see all the beautiful things that your hand has made and shaped and, and to your likeness, O oh God. God, we thank you this morning, Lord God, for your love and kindness is better than life. We thank you, Lord God, that you hear every word we say. You said there is nothing, Lord God, that's hidden from you, that everything about us is laid open, naked, bare before you. So, God, we praise you this morning. We give you honor this morning, Lord God. All the glory belongs to you. You said, look to the hills from which cometh our help. Our help comes from you, God. We thank you, Lord God, that there is no other. We thank you, Lord God, for this day and this day alone. We don't know what tomorrow may hold. So, God, we thank you this morning, Lord God, and we just give you praise. We give you honor and we give you glory. We thank you, Lord God, for our health and strength. We thank you, Lord God, for our children. We thank you, Lord God, for healing our body. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up Susie to you this morning, oh God. God, touch her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. And all of those who have prayer requests, I did not hear them this morning, but God, you know everything about them, oh God. God, bring healing to their mind, body, and spirit, oh God. Bring love to each of us, oh God that we may love our neighbors as ourselves, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for declare victory this morning. We thank you for every soul that's listening, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, God, we praise you this morning for Dion and Tanya and all of those that were in the making of declare victory. God, we just give you praise this morning. We thank you, Lord God, for your love and kindness is better than life. God, we thank you for your word this morning that's on the inside of us, oh God. God, we thank you for our children. We thank you for our grandchildren. We thank you for our spouses this morning, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, that you love us so much, Lord God, that you've given yourself for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, if we can take our phones off mute, give God the praise that he so deserves this morning. Thank you, Father God. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, God, you are the great God. You're a good, good Father. And we thank you, Lord God. There's no other like you, Lord God. We thank you for food on our tables this morning, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for friendship this morning. We thank you for sisterhood and brotherhood. But God, we thank you, Lord God, for your loving kindness, Lord God. We thank you that your word never returns back to you, Lord, oh God. But it will be what you set it out to do. God, thank you this morning for all that you do for us, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for for shaping us and molding us into your likeness, God. We give you praise this morning, Lord God. There is none like you, Lord God. You are Elohim. You are Elohim, the Father God who hears everything, Lord God. The God who hears our voice, Lord God. When we say words, Lord God, and when we talk, and when we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, you are the loving God, the almighty God. You are the most enough God, the unchanging God. God, you never change. The same today and yesterday, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, and forever, Lord God, you are the same God. You are the God who raised our mother.
subject line today. Father, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you this morning. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, God, that we have the use of our limbs this morning, oh God, that we have the use of God, for your people this morning, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise this morning, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. If I had 10,000 songs, I couldn't thank you enough. But God, I, I praise you with every one of them, God. I just give you praise, honor, and glory this morning. But you are great, greatly to be praised. So if we could put our phones back on mute. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for this prayer, Lord God. We thank you for using me, O oh God, this morning. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise, honor, and glory for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen again. Good morning. God morning. Great morning. Happy Thursday to each of you all. Just a heads up real quick. Um, there may or may not be a love life and victory conversation. I don't feel the very best, <clears throat> but I'm going to press my way anyway um, in my Wonder Twin stead this morning. Um, don't want to leave you all without a word from the Lord. I thank God for another opportunity just to get this thing called life right, another opportunity to tell God that we don't take for granted his kindness, his goodness, and his consistency in and through our lives. I'm grateful for um, another opportunity to serve, as always. And um, you can hear me? Oh, hello? Hey, good morning. Hey, good, morning hey, good morning, sis. Good morning, sis. How are you? Hey, I'm I understand you're not you're not <laughs> feeling well, so I if it's not. okay with you, you know the word says I'll be also so ready. So I would be more than happy to step in in your stead this morning if you would like. Thank you, Pastor. I appreciate you. You you are so welcome. <laughs> and good morning, brothers and sisters. I pray that you all are doing well. If if we can, just very quickly, amen, because she gives so much, amen. And I know we oftentimes pay, pray for Sister Dion, but very quickly, can we touch and agree on this morning? Father, I thank you right now for this warrior, this leader, this sister, this friend, this daughter, everything that you created her to be, Lord God. We just thank you for just her diligence, her commitment, her leadership. Father, we pray right now for her health, Lord God, that you just continue, Lord God, to be a balm in Gilead to every area of our body, Lord God. And Father, we profess your word that by his stripes of Jesus Christ that she be healed. Lord, I thank you for just who she is, Lord God. Father, not only bless her health, but bless every area of her life right now. And God, we just declare, we believe it in faith together, and we consider it done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Again, for those that may not know, uh, this is Pastor Daryl Belcher. Amen. But what's more importantly, amen, all of us are servants of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, each and every day of our lives. So on this morning, I do want to bring to you the other word, amen, and I pray that it meets you right where you are, amen, and I am as well. Stepping out, amen, on faith and being able to share with you on this morning. But one of the things that really had me to really think about this is that, you know, your view of God is going to always determine your view of life. I just want to say that one more time. Your view of God will always determine your view of life. And the reason I share that is because realize your view of life will also determine your view of God. So they literally work hand in hand with one another when we're talking about being sustained and being able to endure everything that that comes our way and that we know that God is a keeper, but more importantly, God is in charge. And the reason I say that 
is because whenever your view of God and your view of life will determine your view of who he is, realize that if God is your reference point, then you're going to be able to make sense of that which makes no sense. Now, even on this morning, as long as your reference point is God, no matter what transpires, that you're going to be able to make sense of that which makes no sense. Because if your circumstances are your reference point, then you're neither able going to be able to make sense of life or even make sense of God. Because you have what we call an inverted view. Your inverted view or my inverted view, if we make our circumstances our reference point, then we will not be able to really make sense of what God is really doing in the season of our lives. So what I really want to share on this morning is, again, some important truths to each and every last one of us on today. I want to start with the second most important truth. It's because the second most important truth that we can ever learn as a believer is what I want to literally speak to each and every last one of us on today. And the reason I say the second is because the first thing that you need to learn, and we all have learned, is that salvation by faith in Jesus Christ. It's simply because becoming a Christian is the first thing, that nothing can preempt that as the first understanding of who God is. And to understand and to respond to the gospel or the good news is the first importance of what we are able to walk in when it comes to important truths. As a matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 15 and 3, it reads, For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So we realize and understand that our first understanding is salvation by faith. But Here's where my main thought is, is that the second thing is to understand the importance or the great importance is our understanding of the sovereignty of God. The second most important truth that we can ever have is understanding the sovereignty of God. It's because if you don't understand the sovereignty of God, then you're never going to be able to make sense of life. You see, most of us, most of us have lived long enough to know that life will throw you curveballs. I believe we're living in seeing this right now, that life is full of the unexpected, and it's okay that life is sometimes full of pain, it's full of problems, that life, you know, depending on the lens that you look through, it can be bittersweet, sometimes more bitter, sometimes sweet, sometimes both, but realize that your view of and therefore your response to the sovereignty of God will determine your ability to cope with the confusion of life. Now, just to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm not losing anybody and we're on the same page, let me define to each and every last for one of us this morning what I mean by the sovereignty of God. When I say the sovereignty of God, I'm simply saying that God is the absolute ruler and controller and sustainer over all of his creation. Let me, may I say that one more time, that the sovereignty of God means that God is the absolute ruler, the absolute controller. He is the sustainer over all of his creation. And that sovereignty simply means to rule over or that God intends to reign over or to be in control over. So to say that God is sovereign, which speaks of his kingship. Now we're talking about kingdom. It speaks of his kingship, his, his kingly role is to say that there is nothing that happens over which God is not in control. That should bring some peace of mind to someone out there who maybe can identify with this, that you may not understand what is going on <clears throat> in your circumstance, in your life right now, 
but realize that God that we serve is sovereign, and there is nothing that happens over which he is not in control and realize that that control is either manifested either by what we call direct causation that god has already enabled things to be able to occur in your life that he allows to make it happen or by us consciously or god consciously allowing it to happen so either god directly makes it happen or consciously he will allow it to happen. But either way, God controls it, where he says, that's what I want to happen. And guess what? Because God wanted it to happen, it happens. Or God may be able to say, that's not what I want to happen. But guess what? I'm going to let it happen because I'm going to use it for what I want to happen. No matter if God directly caused it or no matter if God allows it, realize he's going to use it for his will. So what that means on this morning, my brothers and sisters, is that when it comes to sovereignty of God, you cannot have a sovereign God and have luck. You cannot have a sovereign God and have chance. And you cannot have a sovereign God and have faith. Because that means the terms that we just talked about, that we refer to, that you have bought into things happening haphazardly with no order to them, with nothing or no one being in control, that circumstances and situations just show up. No. You see, God's sovereignty says that things just don't happen that things are under control, watch this, even when they are out of control. <laughs> I believe the Bible speaks about this in Ephesians 1 and 11. <clears throat> Ephesians 1 and 11, it says, also we obtain this inheritance having been predestined according to his purpose who worked all things after the counsel of his will. All things. You see, God is creator, God is controller, and God is sustainer of all things. So in order for us to really have this proper view, we got to establish on this morning that governing principle of life, and that governing principle of life has to be the sovereignty of God. Therefore, you and I can never first appeal to our circumstances. It's because if God is sovereign and we are not sovereign, that means that your circumstances are not sovereign, but God is. Your circumstances don't have control over you. Your situations, that what you're going through, it doesn't have control over you if you serve our sovereign God, because circumstances are not sovereign. We are not sovereign, but the only one who is sovereign, who is in control of everything, and that is God. So on this morning, the reference point for our lives must not be life itself. It should not be that we are looking to sustain ourselves, but our reference point in life must be the sovereignty of God. Now, this, this very quickly leads me to probably the greatest verse I would probably ever say, in my opinion, in the Old Testament, maybe even in the Bible, minus Jesus being able to come here and we receive him as our king. But when it comes to life, understanding, and circumstances, and as it comes to an intersection in this life, whenever we're looking for the sovereignty of God, I believe it's found in Genesis 50, and we're going to get there in a moment, but we'll find in Genesis 50 where it comes to the end of a saga of a young man's life that I'm pretty sure everyone here is familiar with by the name of Joseph. You see, Joseph 
had been sold into slavery by his brothers who were jealous of him. Then Joseph, who had been sold into slavery, winds up working for a man named Potiphar because the slave owners took him to Egypt. So they sold Joseph as a slave to Potiphar, where Joseph climbed the ladder of success in the corporate world, and he became Potiphar's administrative assistant, managing all of his household affairs. But while managing his household affairs, Potiphar's wife, sought to seduce Joseph, and guess what? Because Joseph wanted to operate as a man of integrity, he refused. He didn't give in to the advancements of this woman. But understand, in her anger, she began to cry rape against Joseph. And of course, whenever she makes the accusation that Joseph raped her or tried to rape her, of course, this made Potter for furious that he entrusted Joseph over all his affairs, that he would seek to rape his wife, which was not even true. And Potiphar, as a result of this, had Joseph thrown in jail. So as a recap, we find that Joseph was sold in slavery for no just cause. Now he's in jail for no just cause. And But guess what? While in jail, there are two men who are in jail with him, one man sentenced to death and one man who is set free. Joseph says to the man who was set free, and making a long story, a short, a long story short, remember me to Pharaoh. Remind Pharaoh that I'm still here rotten in his jail. The man who he talks to, guess what he does is people prone to do whenever you help them out of a situation they couldn't find any help and way out. They forget. Anybody been there other than me? They forget. So they're forget he forgets because he's free and he ain't thinking about nobody else. And now Joseph has not only been thrown into a pit, sold into to, to those that are trying to sell him as a slave, accused of rape, now in jail, now he's forgotten when he helped somebody who was in need of help to get free. Now I want you to understand something when we're talking about the sovereignty of God, because this is what we would call 12 or 13 years of events that I just described to you. 12 to 13 years of these things that happened one after another, after another, after another to Joseph, and that every time it looks like Joseph was about to come out of his circumstance, it felt as if he went down. I believe somebody remembers the old saying that if I take one step, I feel like I'm going back to. You talk about life not being fair. Joseph, and I don't believe in pity parties, but Joseph, I believe, has a legitimate cause to say that his life has not been fair. But understand, God moves. He'll take a circumstance and he'll use it for his own purpose, whether he caused it or whether he allows it. Because Pharaoh now has a dream and he can't interpret and he doesn't understand what the dream means. So he comes to a place where he has this dream and he can't interpret it. And the man in jail all of a sudden who's serving Pharaoh, now he remembers that it was this dude in prison who, who was good at this stuff. It was this woman who created the clap victory. She is good at this stuff. She and he can interpret dreams. And since nobody else can tell you what this dream means, maybe you ought to call him in prison. I believe his name was Joseph. You see, Joseph all of a sudden is summoned up to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh tells him it's a dream, and Joseph says that this is the interpretation of your dream, Pharaoh, that there's going to be seven years of plenty, and then there'll be seven years of famine, and in order to get ready for the seven years of famine, you're going to have to store from the seven years of plenty. It sounds a little bit like 2022 to me, but that's a whole nother subject. Pharaoh, y'all, because Joseph interpreted his dream, was so awed by Joseph's ability to interpret his dream, that he took him from the op house to the white house. You see, Joseph in one day becomes the second in command in Egypt, that because of over 12 years of pain, that is overturned in one night. I mean, 
Think about this, y'all. He couldn't climb the ladder as a Jew in 12 years, even if he applied for the job and he worked at it for 20 years where they gave him an ink pen and a, and a semi-plated gold watch. But what God does is because through the supernatural, not luck, not opportunity, that Joseph is placed second in command in a foreign land that are not even his people. That through a series of events, that his father and 11 brothers are now caught in a famine. And the only place that they could get food is in Egypt. Be careful of the people and how you treat them on your way up because you very well might have to run across them on your way down. You see, Egypt, y'all, because of the interpretation of the dream, has all of this extra storage. And the only place where you can get food is you got to go to Egypt. So the brothers, because of their dire straits, they now have to make the pilgrimage to Egypt. They make their way to Egypt, and they're going to request of Egypt to request for food. But as they entered Joseph, guess what? He recognized his brother. These are the boys who sold me into slavery. These are my brothers. But guess what? His brothers didn't even recognize him. We know the story because the years had passed, and the last time they saw him, he looked like one of them. How many of you realize God will take you to a place where you don't even look the same in his family? You see, Joseph, 12 years of going through, 12 years of feeling like he had been left to himself. Now he's living large and things have changed. And they don't know who he is, but guess what? Joseph knows who they are. So Joseph does a number of things in this particular passage or this pericope of scripture. He forces them not only to come to some food, but he also forces them to come back. You see, one thing that Joseph did was to tell them, you leave your younger brother with me. And also, by the way, how is your father doing? Now, he's getting all this information, all this intel. The brothers come back. They gather in the room with him. Joseph says, hold on for a minute. And he turns aside. And guess what Joseph does? He has to go outside and he weeps because he's bawling like a baby. In fact, five times in this particular story, Genesis, and, and the 50th chapter, we find that Joseph and his brother said, and he, wither, he bitterly wept. You see, there's a lot of reasons why Joseph wept. One of them, he wept because he saw his brothers again. But then the second thing is he wept because he remembered what they did. We find in Genesis chapter 45, you don't have to turn there or anything, but the brothers are standing there before him. Joseph clears the room and all of the Egyptians in order to leave himself along with these men. And Joseph says, my, you know, come near to me, man. Now they're wondering what's going on here. You got the second in command in Egypt. They're calling them who they don't even think they're as significant. They just came to get food. And all they did was come to really get nourishment for their father and their family. But now they're trapped in this circle and they can't break out of it because Joseph says, come near. The Bible says that they go on to say that Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. Now, now, here's where my theology and my studies tell me is that from my perspective, the reason why he tells the Egyptians to leave and the men to come closer is because Joseph wants to show them something that would validate his identity. And the only thing that would validate Joseph's identity was his circumcision. Everybody had to leave, but you all come near to me because I'm going to prove to you who I am because only Jews at that time were circumcised. Nevertheless, these, these men are terrified because one of them, because the one they sold into slavery is now in charge. You know, there's an old saying, declare victory, where it goes around. I believe y'all are probably finishing it for me right now if you were unmuted, comes around, and that it ain't over till it's over. So in Genesis chapter 50, the brother said that the father was dead, Jacob is now dead, and they're all terrified. 
What if Joseph held a grudge against them to clear victory? What if he wanted to pay them back in full for all the wrong that they did? As long though as the brother surmised, as long as the daddy was alive, out of respect for the daddy, he would have to hold his hands against them. But now there is not no daddy here to hold Joseph back. But what if now Joseph decides to get even? So they concoct the story, and this is where we find who I'm trying to get to. And they make up a story in Genesis 50, verse number 16 to 17. If you have your Bibles, Genesis 50, verse number 16 to 17, it says, So they sent a message to Joseph, saying, Your father charged before he died, saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph, Please forgive, I beg you, the transgressions of your brothers and their sin, for they did you wrong. And now please forgive the transgressions of the servants of the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. The reason why Joseph wept is because he felt it wasn't fair. It wasn't right. His life got messed up because they messed him up. Has there anybody on this line, declare victory. Is there anybody in your life that's probably messed you up? What did they do to you? What did they What did they do about you? How did they talk about you? How did they put you down? How did they treat you? How How did they renege on the promise that they made to you? Whatever, whenever, and whatever it might be, that what is it that messed you up for years? Because Joseph spent 12 years of torture for something that he did not do wrong. But Genesis 15, 18, it says that his brothers also came and fell down before him and said, behold, we are your servants. And then Joseph says the words that are at the heart of the point I'm trying to make with each and every last one of you all this morning. Genesis 50 and 19, the word says, but Joseph said to them, do not be afraid for I am in God's place. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring about this present result to preserve many people alive. I can't believe that it doesn't get stated any clearer than that. Am I in God's place? He says, I'm looking at this through a different set of eyes than you are. You are looking at what you did to me, and what you did to me was wrong. But what you did to me is not my final reference point, because God is sovereign. He has control, direction over our life, and he sustains me. You see, what you did isn't the bottom line. What you did isn't the final point. What you did doesn't make it over. He says, you meant it for evil. You did me wrong, but God in his sovereignty meant it for good to bring about this present result. When life treats you wrong and you only focus on the wrong, then you're missing the point. Because when life treats you wrong, God is still in control and he's a sustainer. When life is not fair, it doesn't mean that it's not God. Because when God allows people to do things to those who are committed to him, you can be assured that God is allowing bad things for a good reason. Now, now let, me, let me possibly say that another way. L- let me share this. Anything that happens in your life, because God is sovereign, Watch this. It must pass through his fingers first. I I need to say that one more time. Somebody, I felt it that you received that. That if anything, and I mean anything, happens in your life, 
because God is sovereign and you are a child of God, then because God is sovereign, it must pass through his fingers first. You see, God has the power to either stop it, reverse it, correct it, or kill it. And if he didn't, then understand, if he didn't stop it, if he didn't reverse it, if he didn't correct it, if he didn't kill it, then realize it's because God wants to use it. Some of y'all right now, God is using your circumstance. He's using your situation. He's taking your pain and he's converting it into your power. You meant it for one thing, in it. When you saw me in the Savior, but God meant it for something else. You see, you were thinking I'm, I was irritated, I was mad, I was jealous of you, that we don't like you, we don't want you here anymore, because that's how you were thinking. But when God lets you get through with that, God is going to reveal that he's up to something else in your life. So Joseph said, and the reason God did it is in verse 20, is that it might bring about this present result. Some of y'all have been praying for power. Some of y'all have been praying for patience. Some of y'all have been praying to go to another dimension. God says, in order for me to do this, either I'm going to purposely do it or I'm going to allow it and use it for my own purpose because I'm going to use it to bring about this present result. Some of us, he has to humble us. Some of us, he has to make sure our faith is in alignment for the move in which he's going. Realize that he allowed with Joseph an event 12 years ago that brought Joseph to where he is today. He allowed something negative, y'all, not only in Joseph's life, but God will allow something negative in our past to bring about what you're looking at right now. God used something in your past so that your prayer life woo, can put Jesus on the run. God used something in your past in order for your faith to go to another level. God used something in your past so that your compassion for people will allow you to look upon those even who did you wrong so that you'll be able to share with them grace. Joseph says in that, in fact, brothers, thank you. Thank you for selling me into slavery because when you put me in that hole and you lied to daddy and told him I was dead, God allowed the Ishmaelites to come up and to see me, and they took me. God allowed me to be sold to them to power for. Then God allowed me to be put in prison for a crime that I didn't commit in order to bring about this present result. And he says that in order for God to allow this to happen to me in my life, to bring about this present result, he says it was done in order to save many lives. Y'all stop looking at the micro, start looking at the macro. God is allowing or God is orchestrating things in our lives, not to harm us, but in order to bring about a present result so that many lives will be saved. I'm going to get ready to bring this word to a close, and then we're going to open up for thoughts and comments. But before we go, look at look at Genesis 50, 21. Genesis 50, 21, it says, So therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. So he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Declare victory. Daryl Belcher, <laughs> when you have God's point of view, whenever you have God's point of view, you can relate to people who hurt you differently. I'm going to let that marinate just for a moment. Just for a moment. That whenever you have God's point of view, you can relate to people who hurt you 
differently. You see, if all you see are the people who hurt you, you did this to me, I'm going to get you. All that is telling me is that you didn't see the hand of God and you thought it was all about what they did. But because Joseph never lost sight of the hand of God in the sovereignty of God, that God is in control, that he is a sustainer, even if I can't see it, that when they repented, Joseph brothers, Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. I not only forgive you, but I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to comfort you. I'm going to help you. All because the recognition of God's sovereignty, it gave Joseph the freedom of forgiveness. The greatest gift that we can ever receive, I believe, in this season is forgiveness. Somebody, under the sound of my voice, it's time for you to push the delete button over your life because what you are really looking at is the hand of God over your life. You're looking at God's sovereignty over your life. And whenever you do, that's when you're ready for the inheritance of the blessing because you have now proven to God that you trust him and his sovereignty as ruler, as king, and as sustainer over your life. Father, we thank you right now for this word that has been released. Father, I pray, Lord God, that somebody, Lord God, this word was able to resonate with them, Lord God, that they're able to not just be hearers, but, Lord, it meets them right where they are. But, Lord, not only meet each and every last one of us right where we are, Father, also elevate us, pull us up, Lord God, to the level, to the dimension, Lord God, where you're calling us to. God, I thank you for being able to allow, Lord God, me to be used, Lord God, just for your glory. I thank God for your people, for their commitment, Lord God. Father, I thank you that we walk in your sovereignty, that, Lord God, we understand you are controller, you are ruler, you are king, and you are sustainer over everything that we will ever need and everything we come in contact with. Use us like never before, God. And Lord, we'll forever give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in your darling, matchless son, Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen, my brothers and sisters. God bless you all. Is at this time, amen. We want to move, and if there's anyone who haven't had an opportunity to say good morning, amen, if you we allow you this opportunity now. Is there one? Kindly unmute yourself and um, state who you are and your greetings and blessings. Amen. Good morning. Um, my name is Latoya. Um, your word and your declaration really spoke to me because I've been having a hard time being able to accept what God is doing in my life and just um, the revelation of his sovereignty and that he controls all things and all things have to pass through his fingers before that they are allowed to happen definitely gave me comfort and revelation and just um, what I exactly what I needed today on this day to um, continue to praise and worship him and study in my word and just be thankful that he is doing everything that he is doing in my life, the good, the bad, the indifferent, just to be thankful that he is almighty and sovereign and that he has the last and final say so. So I just want to thank you so much um, for that declaration this morning. Amen. God bless you, sister. Thank you as well. I, I got the feeling I could have just passed you the uh, opportunity and you would have took it even further. So I thank you for that testimony. <laughs> Amen. And thank you for that beautiful thing as well. Is there anyone else on this morning? who, again, wants to be able to uh, say good morning, amen, who didn't have an good opportunity morning. at first. 
Good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's so, <laughs> so good to hear from you. Thank you. Good Amen. morning, Mr. Leomi. A great decoration. Thank you. Amen. God bless you, Sister Naomi. Good to hear from you as always. Good morning, it's Sister Tracy. Excellent word. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you, Sister Tracy. Thank you so much. Amen. Anyone else? Good morning, it's Kenya. Thank you for your declaration. It was excellent. God bless you, Sister. I thank God for you and your words of kindness. Amen. Anyone else? Good morning. This is T.R. Excellent, excellent, excellent declaration. Thank you. God bless you, Mian. It's such a blessing. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Good morning, Pastor. This is Gloria. Uh, Gloria. Gloria's Gloria. Oh. <laughs> I was waiting on it. I was waiting on it. I was trying to do my work <laughs> and talk at the same time. Um, God bless you for that word this morning, the encouragement that um, God is sovereign, and I thank him for how he moves in our lives and, and continues to just bless us and give us grace and strength and peace. So God bless you. I really appreciate you. God bless you. Glorious glory. Amen. We thank God for you. Anyone else, amen, that wants to? Good morning. This is Lori. Thank you so much. God bless you, Lori. Great to hear from you as well. Amen. Anyone else? Hi, good morning. It's Dee. Thank you for that. Uh, I needed that. You just really gave me confirmation. Delete button is hit. Love you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> God bless you, Dee. Dee. Love you too, sis. Amen. Any, anyone else before we move to love, life, and victory discussion? Amen. Then at this time, we will move to love, life, and victory discussion. If there's anyone who Led to share, amen, on what you received uh, from the declaration on this morning. You're free to do so. Good morning, Pastor, Pastor Butcher and Sister Rochelle. Oh, my God. I just hear, I just hear uh, the gun putting back in the holster, the sword coming out, <laughs> dicing and slicing. To God be the glory. Oh, my God. You brought a word this morning. Thank you. I love the sovereignty of God that he reigns over everything, even the possibility of how we feel about a certain thing. So, oh, my God, great declaration. Thank you so much for just jumping in and doing what you do. To God be the glory. May he bless you. Uh, May the blessings of the Lord pursue you and overtake you, that you will work from the overflow of God for stepping in, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. That's my blessing to you this morning. I thank you. I thank you, sister. I receive all of it in Jesus' name. And also to touch and agree with you, to God be the glory. Amen. Anyone else? Good morning. This is Tanya, not Tanya. Um, my teacher extraordinaire. Um, I, I, I just want to, I don't know what I want to do. I want to yell. I would like to scream. Um, I would like to throw my phone. Um, I would like to dance. I would like to like I I am full of emotion. So I'd like to make I'd like to make a motion uh that we yes. uh that we eliminate the uh love life and discussion so that you can continue to teach. Can I get a second on that motion? Oh my god. Amen, just, amen, amen. 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 Okay. Okay. I second, third, and fourth. Second. All right. All those in favor? Oh my God. Daryl. Amen. How could Amen. you do that? I'm Amen. This morning. Amen. I I I am mad. Amen. Uh, <laughs> do you hear me, sir? I'm, it's so disrespectful for you to mess me up like this. I thought about so many different things, and even my current situation. And I remembered, God Amen. is sovereign. Yes. And so my takeaway today is sovereign sustainability. My takeaway to get just remembering, just 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 knowing that every single thing that I've been through that seemed to come from nowhere passed through God's fingers. Oh, sir. Okay, I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> Family, I 
I am just so grateful for each and every last one of you all. Uh, so thankful. Um, words cannot share, but again, to God be the glory. Um, my prayer is we all, you know, not just be hearers, but we continue to hold on to all of these declarations we're receiving month of a month. And not only we hold on to it, but we share it with other people we come in contact with either by two ways, either we verbally do it or we do it by action. So God bless you all. I thank you so much. Next time, amen, I will I will not condense it. I will teach to the fullest, but I need to get permission first, amen. We got to do things in order, hallelujah. <laughs> So Good anyone morning. else, amen, anyone else love like Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am overjoyed on this morning to hear what the enemy meant for evil. God has turned it. He's turned it. So Ooh. many of us, he's turned it around for our good. Thank you for that. You, it's just like I felt like when you did that, you just pushed something up in my belly and it just flew out what mm. the enemy meant for evil. Past God has turned it around for our good. God bless you. Awesome work. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you, sister. Thank you so much for sharing. I almost jumped in a praise myself right there. <laughs> Amen. Woo! Anyone hey, good morning, else? Pastor. Good morning. Good morning. This good morning. is JR. I just wanted to thank you for your declaration. I I really um, appreciated the part where um, I think you said um, your view of God will um, will determine, like, your view of life, something like that, yeah. you said? Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and that really resonated with me but it also <clears throat> I just I just thought about when you when you uh when you you shared the story of Joseph I just thought about how um how gracious he was to still help the people his family that put him in captivity and I was like you know it, it would have been so easy to uh to have a God complex and just tell them to get lost. You know what I mean? And and I yeah. thought about that because coming back into the uh, family of Christ, like a lot of times people will remind you of, um, how, you know, how bad and, and, and how you did them, you know, and I just, uh, it just really, there were so many times you were, you were sharing and I'll close with this. So many times you were sharing, I wanted to come off you can just say, preach, 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 you know, <laughs> preach, preach, you know, but I didn't want you guys to think uh, JR was over here losing it, you know, but I really appreciate um, your uh, declaration, and I'm still kind of like, I'm still wanting to say, preach, preacher, you know, and it's, it's still in me, you know, I'm, I'm excited a little bit, so uh, thank you very much. Hey, can we do this? And thank you so much, Brother Jair. But is it okay? I pray it is. Is it okay if you can, wherever you are, if you can come off mute for about 30 seconds? And let's just shoot a praise of the God right now. Amen. I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm in tears. I'm at this. Y'all know I work with the babies and stuff. Trying to mop and not let these tears flow, but sometimes they need to because when you said it, he is so sovereign through everything. And saying thank you for reminding me that he's allowed it. God has allowed everything, the good, the bad, the uncertain, all of it. So thank you for today, for this moment, because I tell you, it's so much going on. Like my heart feels like it's going to burst with so much but you reminded mm. me something because he's sovereign. He is my defender. So he's already gone before. Like he's gone yeah. back. He's gone ahead of me no matter what I'm to face. And he brings back the head of the enemy for everything that the enemy tries to throw at me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It may form, but it won't prosper because he's a sovereign God. And he has to allow it for the test and the trials so that my faith can be sure. And I am sure today that I am still standing in my right mind with joy, unspeakable joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength because he is God. Through all the hurt, the pain, all of it, he's sovereign. And I'm still here today because of that. And I thank you for for being ready to step in and just to light me up. I'm about this school about to be so clean. They probably send me home. I love you. Thank you. (laughs) Didi, I love you so much. Thank you so much for sharing on this morning. Amen. Anyone else? Anyone else? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is persistent. Good morning, hey. persistent. <laughs> <laughs> good morning. I got to jump in here real quick and just tell you, thank you so much. I had an out-of-body experience with this message. I found my spirit just jumping around with joy. Not that I didn't know, but there was something about this message. I am going to be walking in sovereign sustainability, knowing that the person that tried to take me out, literally, which was the enemy, and God allowed it, mm-hmm. but he's been keeping me. And I just, I'm just, i just grateful because it's just something about this word that just, just made me leap on the inside, even though I sat here and did not want to miss anything you said, just hanging on to every single word, knowing that God's got this. When I think about, like Dee Dee said, everything she's been, everything we've all been through, everything we're probably still going through, there's still some residue that God is working it out for his purpose, for his what he has designed for us before the foundations of the earth to get us to where he wants us to be. I've even had people in my church who said, who never have spoken to me, who has turned to me and said, I've heard in your prayer lately. I've heard you pray for those lately. And there's a difference. The word of God, he's given you the word and it's all in you and it's coming out of you. You know, it's tough to go through what you've been through, but you're an inspiration. I mean, this, I know the enemy comes to rob, kill, and destroy. I know that when this happened, death showed up at my door. I felt it. I sensed it. I saw the flies all around me in my home. I don't know why God allowed me to see the enemy and see this side, but I do know it's for a purpose, and I do know it's for my good, and I just appreciate you so much, brother, for stepping in, in and out of season. You were ready. I saw the word of God there when you first started out, and I just want to say bless you, man of God. Thank you so much. I just appreciate you, and to God be the glory. 
<laughs> but God be the glory to you as well, persistent. Thank you so much. Uh, I think it was one of the sister who was chiming in as well. Good morning. It's Kenya. I was just saying between your declaration and everything that everybody has said, I haven't stopped pacing my house yet. So to God be the glory, I thank you, and I love you guys all. God bless you, sister. Keep pacing in that fire. You hear me? God bless you. Amen. Anyone else? Hallelujah. Then if all minds and hearts, I believe, are in one accord, amen. Again, I am so grateful um, you all allowed me the opportunity to come share on this morning, amen. God allows things to happen for a reason. I may not have known it. Y'all may not have known it, but God already knew this day would transpire. So my prayer to you is to let go and let God, amen. With all heads, heart, every every head bowed, every heart open. Father, we thank you for your sovereignty. We thank you for all, Lord God, that we have endured, for all that we are enduring, for all that we will have to endure. Father, we know that you're working it to bring about a outcome as of this to save the lives of many. God, we yield ourselves to you on this morning, God. We we thank you, Lord God, for your sovereign sustenance, Lord God, and sustainability over our lives. Father, I pray for each and every person under the sound of my voice, Lord God, on today. They walk with a fire, with a confidence, a boldness like never before. And God, I just thank you for the many testimonies that will come forth that you did it, that you brought it about, that with the enemy meant for bad, God earned it from a good. And God will forever give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It's in your darling, matchless son, Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. God bless you all. Have a beautiful amen. day. God bless and we will you. see you on tomorrow. Have a blessed day. Everybody have a beautiful day. Have a blessed day. day. Have a blessed day. Have a wonderful day, everyone. God bless everyone. God bless everyone. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.